writes the real estate blog for the LA Times and uh, some some other speakers. So I just you know I had five minutes to to say my thing. Do you subscribe to the paper? Um, I haven't bought a print copy of any newspaper in at least a decade. Um, I don't know why, because I prefer to read it online. I mean, I think the LA Times has dramatically dropped in quality um, in the last two years, but, you know, frankly, I think that's all for the good. Like, if the whole thing disappeared tomorrow, I think LA would have a more vibrant uh, news media than, than it does now. How so? Who would pick up the, who would pick up the ashes? Well, I think there'd be so many different competing people to, to fill the void. Uh, till now, the LA Times has been so big that, that whenever a major story came around, they could, like the mayor's affair, they could put 10 reporters on it, and then they would publish something that would be the most complete of any news report, and yet it would be so <sighs> drained of life. It would be so, what's the word, desanitized, that... Um, that it would be very dull reading. Like if you read the L.A. Times reporting on the, on the mayor's affair and on his relationship with that uh, Spanish language newscaster, it was like really boring stuff in general. Even though this was like a fascinating story, they t they took the most boring angles on it, such as uh, was Martha Salinas violating journalism's ethical code by having this relationship with the mayor. Well, there were far more exciting angles on it than that, yet they had so many resources they could still do the most complete job of any journalism outfit, but they, they just kind of like squash the life out of stories. Um, you broke the story about the mayor's failed marriage. He wasn't wearing a wedding ring and that his wife and he were not living together in the mayor's mansion and, uh, and about the affair that he was having with a local uh, Spanish-language television newscaster. Why was that story important? I'm not sure it was important, but it was... Uh well, I guess I am sure it's important now that I, I think about it. I didn't think about it at first in terms of importance. It just, when I heard about it, it struck me as an obvious story. It was just reflex. I didn't even think. I just, as soon as I heard about it, I immediately fired off emails to people who, who would be in the know to confirm that it was true. Then as soon as I confirmed it was true, I blogged it. But um, I only thought about the importance of it afterwards. So it's important in the sense that the guy who's running your city, most likely his most significant relationship is going to be with the woman he's parking. And so whoever he's uh, you know, intimate with um, is probably going to have more influence or effect on him than any other person. So like, wouldn't you want to know the person who's having the most influence on your mayor? That's uh, an interesting perspective. Um I, you know, listen. I I like gossip as much as the next guy, uh, and I I'm not a big fan of the mayor, and so I kind of liked he 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 seemed dishonest in his response initially, and then it was almost he was forced to to tell the truth. Uh, I I love the truth, and I love when people are sort of cornered into the truth sometimes. And for those reasons, I was interested in the story, and I think it was valid, but. But maybe not for the reason that you think. I, I don't know that. Uh, uh, I don't know that his primary relationship with Martin, Mar, Martina Salalas, whatever. <laughs> Martha Salinas, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't know that uh, she was influencing the way he was going to uh, support certain proposals or pro or you know work against them or. Uh, you know, transfer funds to. I, I just, I just, I don't really know. Other than the fact that he was keeping the relationship secret, I don't know um, that it became public. If it changed anything, other than it, it, it led to her dismissal. But other than that, I don't know what it changed. Well, think about in your own life if, if there's a person who has significant power over you. Let's say that you're working at a radio station and there's a boss who has significant power over you. He can change the tone of your show. He can hire or fire you. Um, and you know that you're vulnerable to his power. Would you or would you not be interested to know the person who has the most influence on the person who has the most influence on you? You mean what I want to know if my boss, would I want to know what my boss's wife thinks of me? Oh, wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever it is wouldn't you want to know 
let's say your boss has tremendous power over you. Wouldn't you want to know about the person who has tremendous power over your boss? It mm -hmm. seems uh, pretty obvious to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let's get back to Judaism for a minute. Um, have, has the Jewish community been good to you? Uh, yes, they have. Um, I've been thrown out of five different Orthodox synagogues, but that's because of my own edgy choices in writing. So, um, overall, this has been the best decision I've ever made, you know, even if there is no God and it's all, you know, man-made. What would you write that would cause a shul to kick you out? Well, every community has its own, you know, unique dynamics. And so, well, from the outside, it can sound, you know, weird that I'd be thrown out for, for my blogging. Um, if, if at any time, um, you know, my writing is becoming disturbing to people in the shore for, for any reason, then there's a very strong, you know, dynamic that's built up in the shul and the, and the rab, you know, the rabbi's likely to, uh, you know, to boot me. So people were offended that I was writing on the porn industry, and then people have simply been offended by other other writing I've done. It's interesting. I've always thought, well, I, I don't know a lot of Orthodox Jews. Uh, I know a lot of Reformed Jews, and they seem to be the most tolerant uh, of any religious group. You can be just about anything and as a, 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 and be a Jew. At least that's my that's my understanding. Not so, huh? Uh, that's true for Reform and Conservative Judaism. It's not true for Orthodox Judaism. Orthodox Judaism, precisely because it has the highest standards and um, it makes itself very exciting to me, but it also means that I'm, you know, on the edge and liable to to get tossed out. So, uh, was it a very painful thing to be tossed out the first time? Unbelievably painful. Unbelievably painful. Just like doubled me over. Um, you know, with pain. It, it, but not enough. Uh, it wasn't painful enough that you would, <laughs> excuse the pun, reform. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, have you ever been to Israel? Yes, twice. Mm -hmm. How was that? Uh, amazing. I feel like I'm home, even though I've only spent uh, two weeks there in my entire life. It's it's amazing to have your own your own country it's, uh, it's a very exciting thing for for a, a jew and uh, i i yearn to to move there and create my life why in, don't you in israel um i will it's just trying to figure out how i'd make a living there and you know get by i mean it's hard enough here in la uh well you could live on a kibbutz right uh yeah i want to live in jerusalem there's no, there, there are no kibbutz uh, in, Isra in, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, no. no. Why? Uh, what's uh, what's special about Jerusalem for you? Well, I, w I want to be in a city where there are other writers. I want to be around other writers. Most of my friends are writers, and it uh, that's my life is writing, and I want to be around writers. So I need to be in a big city. Tel Aviv seems to me just like any other you know, big city wherever you go in the world. So Jerusalem, you know, both has a, a strong secular. Uh, writer uh, population and you know a strong religious component. But nothing, I mean, there's nothing that prevents you from living there and writing about the U.S. I mean, it seems like you're an internet. Uh, you're on the internet. You can do it uh, just like me. I can do this from anywhere. I could do it from a you know a little island in the Caspian, <laughs> uh, if there are little islands in the Caspian. But uh, you you could do this. You could do what you're doing from anywhere. Why do you if you feel like Israel is home, and you know that's where you want to be eventually. Why not make the leap of faith? Okay, this is what it says. For the past 20 years, I've struggled with chronic fatigue syndrome, which had me bedridden for, for six of those years. And kind of the outside world is a pretty scary place for me when I'm hmm. chronically ill, mm -hmm. and I just don't have the courage to up and move and start hmm. all over in a brand new land as yet. Hmm. Uh, that seemed like a very painful admission just now. Yes, it was. Oh, I didn't mean to cause you any pain. I, I'm, That's I'm, fine. I'm just curious. Um, let's talk about uh, chronic fatigue syndrome for a minute. Uh, uh, you know, the, it's never really been identified. Uh, they, they said it was the Epstein Barr virus, but even that, my guess is you were never actually they, they never actually found an Epstein Barr virus in your blood. Correct. Yeah. 
Um, so it's never really been identified for you. You just know what the symptoms are, and the grouping of symptoms, for lack of a better explanation, doctors have 